Oh, fuck yeah! Wir können am Abend einfahren oder mit dem Bulli und einfach einen geilen Park bauen. Am nächsten Tag ist es so wett, dann können wir einen schieben. Oder? Das ist einfach ein Lachsteil, Mann. Pound all together is over 1.5 million views, I guess, in the 10 years. So, this is... Yeah, this is also really crazy. <laughs> I have to say. Yeah, 10 years later, it's like we, we did uh, 76 uh, episodes of Crap Show. Meine Freunde haben ja auch Zwei Stunden am Abend kann alle Crapshows durchschauen. Jetzt müssen wir Samstag einplanen. That's like uh, six hours of uh, video in a row, actually. It's like pretty insane. Whatever, like the whole thing, the crap show got, got at that at those times more clicks than any video the whole the resort put out for marketing purposes. <laughs> We were just like basically the the cheapest PR they could ever imagine. Like how many people? get affected by this edit. So this is kind of also touched me again before. I was like, fuck, this is crazy. Like to see how many people you reached. At the end, we reached everybody involved, the riders, you, everybody, of course. But um, this is really impressive, yes. Every season I did around like 100, 100 laps for filming, I guess. So it was around 1,100 laps during the last 10 years, actually. Ich finde, so ein bisschen Crapshow ist vielleicht jedermanns Lohn. Auch ein Fahrer sieht nachher, hey, das haben mega viele Leute angeschaut, du siehst, das haben mega viele Leute angeschaut, ich sehe, wie sie gefahren sind oder auch, dass, dass es mega rauskommt. Und so ist es wie, ja, für mich ist es eigentlich der Lohn. Also ich glaube, ohne das würde es mir schwerer fallen, den Job da oben zu machen, an und für sich. Und wir probieren ja, den Fokus auf das zu legen. Dass das Breitband ist von, von Obstacles, die jeder in diesem Sinne kann fahren kann. Die Transition, eine Transition kann ein 5-Jähriger fahren, kann ein 50-Jähriger fahren, kann ein Profi fahren. Und ich finde, das ist so ein Beispiel dafür, dass, dass man eigentlich den Fokus probiert auf das zu legen, wo alle, dass alle ein bisschen Spass haben. Lax gave a lot to the scene and um, you know, gave people a place where you know, snowboarding was everything. And that's something you know, I can only appreciate. Crap Show ist schon nach wie vor immer noch Inspiration. Also, ich meine, ich mache jetzt das zehn Jahre und immer wieder schaue ich Crap Show und ich ertappe mir jedes Mal wieder dabei, so, wow, dort haben wir das auch gebaut, Freunde. Und, und irgendwie, wow, das ist, das ist, das ist ja gegangen dort, das ist eigentlich mega cool. Also ich finde, es gibt so mega viel Momente, darum schaue ich immer wieder alle eigentlich, alle Jahre, das, wo, wo ich mich ertappe, wo ich finde, mal, das ist eigentlich ein mega cooles Absegel, ein mega cooler Platz, wo du aber schon wieder vergessen hast in dem Sinn, weil es, ja, eben die Schneesituation anders ist oder weißt du was. Und so siehst du es halt dann in dem Sinn mega Ja, es war just gut zu sehen, das war nicht so special. Only this moment was the best. This was the best ride. Because at the end, I guess, it was overall always really, really good shows and people watched it and liked it. Du machst es, du magst auch immer noch mit diesen jungen Kids umhängen, oder? Das ist mir eigentlich nicht einfach einfach. Also muss man auch mal sagen. So. Sicher ist es mega schön, man ist draußen und ist im schönen Wetter, aber es kann wahrscheinlich auch anstrengend sein mit gewissen, gewissen Herren da draußen. Also auch wenn es geil ist und auch wenn die Vollgas geben und wenn wir auch ein Stück weit abhängig sind, sicher auch von ihnen, oder? Kann es sicher auch anstrengend sein mit so jungen Kids. Nein, ja. wir sind ja nicht besser als ja über das. <lacht> Having a sport that you can enjoy together in that free environment of snowboarding gives you. Like, there's no rules how to do something. There's no rule how to dress. There's no rule how to snowboard. There's no one to tell you when you go up the mountain. No one tells you when to stop snowboarding. No one tells you to not take drugs or not drink. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Only your own motivation and your own, what inspires you matters. The re 
reason why I stayed here in the resort all the time is like, I don't like to travel too much. I like to stay in a resort and read the conditions and know all the people here, which was also really important for me to be here, to have the connection to all the riders who I wanna, want to film. Like, yeah, it's definitely not just filming, it's also connecting with all the riders and see who is good for the crap show and yeah. For me, it just felt like yeah, it was harder to, you couldn't kind of do what you do today with your iPhone and just um, put yourself in the spotlight by yourself. I mean, we, we could see how this whole, the Instagram, Facebook came up and uh, I mean, how that shaped the whole scene, how instant everything has become. I mean, back in the days, they would film for a year and you would see what, what comes out in October. And nowadays, you know, sponsors want you to bring out a video mid-season and kind of instantly show what's going on, which is, which is all... Which, it's good, it's evolved into this, but I think this portraying yourself fast kind of uh, quick video editing on your phone it's it all has its place and it's all fun and good i honestly don't know if that's a good thing i think it's really cool because everyone can just film a bit do whatever they want they can be creative it doesn't have to be like high budget or anything on the other hand i totally get it that people like get annoyed or it's a bit sad because it's just short clips and so the big projects which need a lot of work and effort money everything they like get a bit downgraded you know nowadays with instagram you can see everything daily on a daily basis and have it right in front of your eyes but i mean not that long ago you know it was such no one and i think that hype is still there when you watch the videos nowadays you know you have like you know i still feel like that's the best way to show the park kind of, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, you can see it as a good thing, or you can see it as a bad thing. For me as a filmer, it's not the best thing actually, because everybody is a filmer right now, makes some shitty follow cams. <laughs> but for the riders, it's a good opportunity to, to show it to the people really easy. Back in the days, you had to film and wait a season or actually a year for, um, for the movie to come out. So it changed, of course. And also the riders, they are not into filming like back in the days maybe but you have to go with the flow actually and yeah snowboarding was always a, uh, a thing which changed really fast yeah you have to chase these new things to be up to date actually and connect with the new riders i don't think in quantity you can uh, replace you can't replace the quality with quantity or you can't bring a you can't give back the feeling of of this lifestyle with more content i don't believe that i think uh, they always say less is more and the less you produce the more quality or time you can put into quality and you don't have to put time into quantity but it's a direct reflection on on our society i guess you know everything has to go fast there has to be a lot of it and people working in marketing are saying likes, 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 but who is liking the content? You know, the people that would buy your products liking this content or some kids in the cities liking this content, you know, like to me, that is not very, uh, you don't have a lot of insight in that. I'd rather play with feelings and, and, and show people, or I'd rather be in a project where we can highlight snowball culture and bring a feeling to the audience. But it's not like that it changes dramatically 100% everything. So this is also really good to see, I guess. And that's what video does, you know, it, it, it gives you a, a feeling and, and trying to bring 
or to show that feeling or highlight that feeling in an authentic kind of way only comes with quality and, and the right minds behind it. Yeah, we, that's also a struggle we were always in. I remember or we were talking a lot about this. How should we make the format for the phones, for the Instagram, for, for all the channels we have? And also there, I guess we find a good balance now. Um, which you still have the screen, the big one, if you want to watch it. And um, yeah, still people do. And I guess screen's getting not smaller somehow. <laughs> I showed it here once in the, in the riders on the screen and it's also different. I mean, it's not the 4K Beamer, but it's just how, it's way more impressive still. The pictures, they touch you way more. And this is also important, I guess, it's still high quality movie. We can still watch it on the big, bigger screens we have. Some people have at home still. <laughs> and I guess this is also really important still to see that this is still working. Because we can see where the people watch it in the statistics. And it's still saying that, of course, the phone is, is coming up big time, but it's not like that it changes dramatically 100% everything. Yeah, what's definitely really inspiring for me is like the art, what snowboarding brings. For me, it's definitely an art form. And I looked always more up to the stylish riders than to the riders which are doing spins like, I don't know, like a helicopter. <laughs> But yeah, that still keeps me, keeps me motivated, like framing these guys in, like hanging in the air, like upside down, tweaking hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm a guy which, which is thinking in pictures actually, and pictures are for me more memorable than any numbers or whatever. That's for what crap show stays a little bit, like not for the hardest snowboarding, it stays more for what snowboarding really is. It's about style, about feeling good, about be with friends. Yeah, of course. I mean, we were always not maybe scared, but yeah, maybe you're also a bit scared sometimes to, yeah, to lose track or not scared, but you don't know, is it really still on time or it's also jobs involved, is people working? And so you, you want to be on the right track. But at the end we figured out when, yeah, I think people still doing their passion and um, of course also staying with the, with the core crew, I guess is important because we all get older, uh, or we are already. And I think it's really important to stay, uh, yeah, stay with the young people and um, see what they like, what they do. But I think it's still the same what we do, kind of what we like. And this shows in the crap show really, really well, I guess, how, yeah, how they still snowboard. And if you compare it, of course, the knee was way higher. Yeah, it was really the start and it really motivated me to go further and do more stuff and try this and that. And it really got me into that Lux uh, crew too a little bit. And that's why like Nicholas had an eye in me maybe a little bit. And I guess over him, it, everything happened with Absent. He kind of told Justin, hey, what about this guy? And then everything worked out and I could film with Absent, which was a, yeah, pretty much a dream come true for me. Then being filmed and, you know, I guess reflecting back on that, feeling that hype from a lot of the people and the media was, was just really motivating as well. Petro Leidenschaft is, kommt immer etwas Geiles aus dabei. Blast up! Shout out to Snowpark Clark's crew. 
Machen es immer gut, schäbt immer alle Paars. Mittags reshape ist auch sick. Machen immer neue Sachen rein. So nach, nach einem Monat, zwei. Das ist geil, immer den Park umbauen. I want to thank Lux for giving Freestyle and us the opportunity to evolve and be part of this movement. Uh, it's not, don't take it for granted, other ski resorts started with that quest and never went through. Thank you, Blume, for, uh, for everything you do. Thanks, Lags, for having me every season. Uh, can't wait to get on my board again. I don't know, I want to thank, thank everybody out, out here in Lags. Lucas Blume, Roger Hyde, fucking the resort, the shapers, the homies, and yeah, it's, uh, it's the best place for me to spend my time. Sick. Also, thank you Roger Hyde, thank you Rito Poltero, thank you Rito Gurtner, thank you an uh, all die Leute, die wo, wo, wo seit, seit zehn Jahren dabei sind, seit zehn Jahren drin fahren, all die Gäste, die schauen sicher auch, all, all die Kommentare schreiben, all die Feedbacks ge geben, auch wenn sie negativ sind, aber all das bringt das weiter, das Ding. Wirklich danke vielmals, weil ohne die all gäbe es das nicht. Und das wäre wirklich, für mich wäre das mega schade, weil ich, ich finde es wirklich ein mega cooles Ding. So. Ja, das ist, das ist mir wichtig, das, das einfach zu danken. Ja. Super stoked to meet you guys, like all the Lux homies and it was just such a good crew and such a good vibe for for years. We had a, yeah, probably like five years or something together where we just hang out and snowboarded and yeah, it was just a really good time. Roger Hyde that was here from day one in the park and Philipp Ruckle is still portraying the park. He was the first official park shaper. And it's still nice. I hope we, we keep going for, maybe, I don't know, another 10 years is maybe too long to say from now, but it um, can be, you never know. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to say thank you, Lux and the whole snowboard community for being real and I don't know, letting me experience so much. That's it.